Former governor of Arkansas and Republican presidential candidate. Sir, how are you? Good morning to you. Thank you, Bill. Great to be with you. Um, let's take one at a time. Let, let's take Syria first. The president says, have at it, Russia. You're not going to win. You cannot succeed. Is he right? It's interesting. I mean, this president has been rolled by Vladimir Putin like a California sushi. It's just been embarrassing to watch. And whether it's the red line or whether it's now that Russia goes in to prop up Assad, uh, the results are still the same. Uh, Putin is leading. Obama is following. And in fact, I'm not sure that uh, anybody, even his staunchest defenders, can honestly say that leading from behind has led to anything other than an unmitigated international disaster. As president, what would you do then, specifically with regard to Putin in Syria right now? Well, the problem is not what we would do, it's what we should have been doing for the past seven years, which is maintaining the credibility of America. The next president has to get back that place where people respect, trust, and even fear the United States of America. They don't do any of those things right now, Bill. And they don't because this president has picked the wrong side in Syria. He picked the wrong side in Yemen, or excuse me, in Libya. He misjudged Yemen. He picked the wrong side in Egypt. He made promises and threats he never had any intention of keeping. He's announced his intentions in Afghanistan, which has turned out to be a disaster, pulled the troops out of Iraq without a uh, status of forces agreement. I mean, it's just been one failure after another because I don't believe he was ready. Uh, to be president, and I don't think that his philosophical understanding of the nature of our enemy even gets close to truth. But even then, we have to deal with the here and now. And, and if you're president, you're going to yes. have to deal with it then. Now, with, well, rega for, with regard yeah. to Afghanistan, the leading general came out yesterday and disagreed with the administration's position, suggesting that a stronger force must be kept there for a much longer time. What would you do? Is it 5,000? Is it 10,000? Or is it 1,000, as this administration proposes? I don't think you announced the number. That's been one of the failures of the administration. Any time you give your enemy indication of what your limitations are, you've already lost the battle before the battle has begun. You tell him what you're going to do, what the end game is. You maintain some control over how you're going to get it done, whether it's a thousand troops or whether it's 200,000 troops. That's not something that you lay on the table and give to your enemy. That's something you discuss with your own military. But the one thing you make sure is that you commit whatever resources are necessary to win because America can't afford to lose and it's not just America that's on the line really the whole world of freedom and peace is on the line if America fails freedom fails across the globe Governor Christie was with Greta last night in New Hampshire arguing that a governor is what we need in the White House I'm certain you would not disagree with that but here is case here and I'll ask you a specific question about that. God knows we don't want anybody from Congress. So you're, you're, you're so the senators, they, they're uh, off to the side for you, the uh, one I'm running? For me, they are. I mean, I, I just don't think we want another person whose only experience is being in the United States Senate. We need to have a governor be president of the United States, someone who knows how to make decisions, is unafraid to make decisions, will enforce the law, and knows that you're held accountable every day. Now, that may be true, and you experienced that in Arkansas, but what do you know about foreign policy? That you would bring to the I White think, House that would be effective. Yeah. You know, I always hear that, that governors don't know anything about foreign policy. Bill, what most people don't know is that governors have actually carried out trade deals with heads of states and heads of multinational corporations all over the world. They didn't just go on a junket where they were one of ten people uh, going over and having some photo ops and maybe, uh, you know, getting briefed. They were actually involved in negotiating and coming to a conclusion. But the idea that a person who sat on a, a committee for a few years is somehow able to have good judgment, he may have knowledge, but knowledge is not the capacity for judgment. And you don't elect a president for what he knows. You elect the president for what he doesn't know that's going to happen and how he can handle mm. it with good judgment. Because you may think you know what your day is, and this is why I think a governor is better prepared. But the day that a tornado rips through your state and kills 30 people, the day you have a school shooting, the day that you have a flood that overwhelms all of your resources, the day that you take in 75,000 people from Hurricane Katrina and try to figure out how to uh, find them a bed and a meal and clothing, those are the days that nobody wrote a book for. You either are prepared to make those tough calls and lead, and that's what I believe makes for a great president. Uh, quickly here, I'm out of time. Real clear politics average, you're right around 3%, a tick below that at 2.9. Will you make the main stage? for the CNBC debate at the end of October? 
Well, I certainly should, by all indications, uh, you know, I, I should be there. And, uh, you know, I think one of the challenges we face, Bill, is that these polls, based on a lot of times as few as 230 samples, uh, I don't want the media or polls picking the next Republican nominee for president. I'm, I'm I know there's got to be a reason. I'm well, that's why we have you on today to make your case. Thank you, Governor. We'll talk Thank again. Thank you. Mike Huckabee with you, us Bill. today. You bet.